Hey everybody, welcome back to the DC stage. Really, come on guys. We, we got a couple of guys here you should be more excited about. Yeah. My name is Mike Avil and I'm with Sci-Fi Wire and it's my genuine pleasure to bring up two legends of comics here to talk about their latest project, Superman Year One. John Romita Jr. and Frank Miller. John, take a seat. I'm Frank, I'm sorry, that's just, just done. You'll be putting on a little art display for us while we talk here. Frank, you're gonna supervise and make sure that he does a good job. <laughs> right, you're gonna micromanage his drawing. I'm sorry, this Mike, is, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. These tools are not good enough for me, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, <laughs> Okay, so, this no, is the first you know, I, I'm not a teacher and also, uh, this you is know, the first time you like guys... There's, there are lost causes, and there's Ramita. <laughs> Ball busting 101 on stage. Pretty All right. much, pretty much. Sorry if there's children in the audience. Yes, let's keep it clean, John. There are children here. Frank, this is the first time in quite a while you guys have worked together. Uh, when you came up with the idea for the project, uh, was John's name first on your list of who you wanted to reach out to to collaborate with on it? You want a straight you want a straight answer, right? You want the I, do you want total the truth? <laughs> um It was a long list and he wasn't on it. Um No, actually he was the only guy I could think of. <laughs> the 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 idea of seeing him draw Superman was, was one of the main things that got me going on this on this project. I always wanted to do Superman. Um but working with John again made it an irresistible project. John, how easy was it for you to say yes when, when he called you and talked I, to you about it? Every time we talk about working together, I say I have yes prepared for him, so it's not a problem. <laughs> it's in the back pocket waiting for him. We grew up together in the industry, so to speak, so yeah. we've worked together not enough, but the times that we have have been glorious to me. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know you were going to have to draw about 200 pages, though, for these three issues? I didn't know it was going to be 200 <laughs> oh, wait pages. Wait a minute, wait a minute, excuse me. It wasn't. He tell made the, it that long. Tell him the story about the addendum on Man Without Fear. Oh, God, yeah, well, <laughs> on Man Without Fear, that's Man Without Fear, you know, the Daredevil Man Without Fear book started um, really as my treatment for a TV pilot for a production of Daredevil that never got made. Um, and, and I... Uh, <clears throat> Talked to John about making it into a comic book series. And uh, we, we got rolling. But as we got rolling, the page, his pages started coming in. And they gave me all kinds of ideas. So I would send him addenda, which was just additional scenes and sequences to draw in the book. Well, these, then his pages would come rolling in. And they'd be amazing. And they, but they would take up a lot of pages. And they would just inspire all kinds of ideas, more ideas, so I sent some more in. <laughs> and they came rolling back, and this thing that was supposed to come out as this little four-issue miniseries just kept getting fatter and fatter and fatter and bigger and bigger until it became the book that you're familiar with. Um, and it was, it was really a case of how, it was a really a sign of how things were starting to loosen up um, in the industry and how we could work much more like novelists do um, and, and not, not be so trapped. And it got to be the length that really wanted to be and needed to be. And we got to get all those really nice, big, full page and double page Romita drawings that we got in there. He said, I have a, an addendum. It's going to be gonna complain page. now because Romita is what we call a very whiny man. <laughs> It, he calls me and says, between page 17 and 18, there's going to be an addendum. And just throw it in there. It was 88 pages. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's what happened here, only not quite in between page 17 and 18. What I'm curious about is, you know, like the first issue, it, it's, it's gorgeous, just gorgeous weak, pages. Weak, right? John. But, but John, there's not a lot of superhero weak. stuff I mean, there, John. In, in this first issue, it, it, it's almost all in Smallville. And... He's drawing these amazing pages, but it's not, you know, superheroes slugging it out in space or above Metropolis. That's got to be challenging, and you can, you can obviously speak to this. You're an artist as well. Are those kind of sequences harder to draw for you than the big epic fight scenes? Uh, 
they're challenging, but they're not harder. It's just you have to make sure that they look legit as opposed to playing with the, the action choreography. So you have to have somebody walking down the street of a Kansas town. Got to look like a Kansas town. Can't be Manhattan. And yeah, they're challenging, but we, we've done it before. So it's kind of fun to get into it. And those uh, instances with, with him as a young man, uh, with bullies or you know being awkward with the female playing football, that was more fun than the choreography of the battle scenes, to tell you the truth. It was. He mentioned uh, the, the scenes with the female. Uh, Lana Lang is awesome in the They're in girls. The They're women. I mean, he's just females. He's like a guy out of the 50s. What do you, what do all you males out there think of? <laughs> Tell me about uh, Lana and your story because in that first issue, she's such a firecracker and she's so fascinating. She just jumps off the, the page. How much fun did you have uh, writing her in this story? I loved writing Lana and, and, and it's, it's, it, Lana and Lois to me, really, um, it's, 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 they have to be there for Superman to work, for Clark to work, because, because they're, they're, um, they're powerful characters. I mean, both are, both are very courageous. Um, the, the, Lana is absolutely fearless in the face of terrifying taunts and, and the menace of, of, of the, the bad kids. And Lois, well, she's beyond belief. She's, you know, she's she's braver than Superman. Um, so the the, the uh, these characters really define him in many ways. He he's really turning into an explorer here. He's he's learning about his planet as as Pa Kent tells him in in, in issue one. Uh, tell me about how you approach telling, the you know filling in the blanks in this part of Superman's story, because you said something interesting in an interview when the when the book debuted, he said, Batman can be summed up rather easily. Superman is, is a bit harder to do. What did you mean by that, and how did that inform your storytelling approach here? Well, you can say, um, <clears throat> if you really want to describe Batman to somebody, you can say, he saw his parents murdered when he was a little boy and decided to fight crime for the rest of his life. And that tells you an awful lot of what you need to know about Batman. With Superman, it is more difficult because you've got to describe that he was born on a utopia that was, that was, um, that was extinguished by the hand of God and that, that, he, that he was um, you know, put in a rocket like you know, like 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 Moses cast upon the sea, to 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 come to be raised in, in you know Midwestern America, and 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 become this American um, icon. So he, it's it's you know it's 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 a more tortured path, in many ways. Even though he's not the dark one. Um, I just like the. So the, the fact is, he's gone through all of this agony. He's seen his entire species wiped out, and he's still got a good attitude. Well, I, I just I, I just love the, the aspect that he added to this, that the Kansas parents affected him more so than his natural parents and probably saved the universe because if they had been maniacs and turned him into an axe murder, we'd have all been in a lot of trouble. It's a great point. So the, if, he, if he had landed in the wrong neighborhood in Appalachia. There you, you go. Know. If he had landed in Brooklyn, <laughs> we'd all have been in trouble. We're not generalizing with the people in Appalachia, but I get your point. <laughs> No, that's a, that's a great point. And Pa Kent, obviously, and, and Ma Kent giving the great advice that they do, that really helps shape his character. But it's really, you said this, that it, it's, 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 a, it's an immigrant story that you're telling here, and, and, and about him learning about this new land that, he, that he's living in, and he's going out there. And then you... Also, you excuse me, it, it, it is an immigrant story, but that makes it a quintessentially American story. Because everybody in this room is an immigrant. And 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 uh, and the, so the the uh, I mean, there's a reason why the character named Superman isn't a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Nordic uh, character. The character was created as the as as World War II was brewing, and I believe there's an element of the cre of the creation of Superman that was a response to the global um, fascist movement of the time. 
that, that certainly those two Jewish kids in Ohio were, were feeling a lot of, what, of, of the, the winds of war that were coming. And so Superman, Superman is a character with cultural significance. And I, th I think that while we can't walk around parading that in this book, we keep it in our back pocket, in the back of our minds as we do it. More importantly, is he going to ink this or I'm going to redraw this because I'm looking at it and I want to fix everything that I just did. <laughs> Go ahead. You want to you want to play with this? I want to look at it. Make it look better, like Danny, <laughs> like Danny Mickey did on all 200 pages. Hey. Where's Danny? Thank him for saving my ass on that book. Uh, keep it clean. Remember, think of the children. My the posterior. <laughs> <laughs> okay. While he's examining your artwork and getting ready to rip it to shreds, what can we expect in the upcoming issues of this story? Uh oh, wait. First, Frank, <laughs> what do you have to say about it? I was nervous. The sun was in my eyes. The bills, the kids, you know, all that stuff. Save it? Please? For their sake. I hear grumbling in the back. Is this how it felt when you would show your dad uh, your you know, um, drawings? You know, <laughs> my father would love it. My mother would say, mm. <laughs> He's dead, Jim. Um, what do we think, folks? Do we like that drawing? Mm. Wow, mm. tepid. 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 <laughs> tepid applause. That's so why we need him to fix it. <laughs> so, um, have you ever, I mean, how long have you been thinking about doing this for a living? Like I said, the bills. Do you know there are schools that teach? Every this? time the mortgage invoice comes in the mail, it gets me in the mood to work. What do you mean? What, what invoice? Yes, we have mortgages, us normal people. But you, 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 he's, I'm sorry, he's trying to tell me he gets paid for this. <laughs> oh, this is sad. I feel like it's just getting personal. I, should, I, I almost feel like I need to walk off the stage here. <laughs> you know, um... Frank, what would you change about that drawing? Oh, God. Now we're You're just piling him straight on. What drawing? Now. <laughs> what drawing? I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, your conversations during the, the you have no idea what the phone process. calls are like. Must be crazy. What I change is a Ramita drawing. I wouldn't change a damn thing. <laughs> That's why we have Danny uh, Mickey and Alex Sinclair. They <laughs> fixed everything. Great part I of the did. team. Uh, Great part of the, uh, the package on this book, by the way. Real quick, you en you enlisted Clark in the Navy, and there's a big change. You know, I know the book is technically out of continuity, but why was that an important part of the story? Well, the idea there, and it was not, it was not my idea, um, was, this, was, was, but was that it was the, uh, was that Pa Kent would say to Clark, you're going to save this planet, you got to know it. You got to, you got to, you got to, uh, um, you, you really, you really got to know, you got to see it, you got to see the people, you got to get a better sense of how it works. And, and so it began the beginning of um, his exploration of what his mission was and of a shape of, of um, so that he wasn't just out to defend a small town or a single metropolis or a single country that he would that he would that he would be um, a global superhero. And so and so so. Uh, this was a way, f to way to get him involved in, in, in seeing the, the world. Also along the way, it gets him to, gets him to uh, put him, puts him in life and death situations where he gets tested in ways that, that he otherwise wouldn't have been tested. Um, you know, he's, he's in com life-threatening combat situations, but he has an absolute code that he was taught by the Kents not to not to murder and so all of this gets put to the test and it's it's a, a right he has to go through before he begins his life in metropolis but imagine that conversation with an intergalactic super person i don't want you to take any shit from anybody pardon me but you got to save people that are getting it from from yeah. being bullied if if you don't split that hair Imagine the difference in the character. So if the, yeah. if the, the Kansas, I remember my father telling me, 
I don't want you starting the fights. I don't want you hurting anybody. But if anybody lays a hand on you, you break their, their ribs. That's how you got to put it. And that, imagine telling an intergalactic super being that. Yeah. That's, that's staggering. I love it. Yeah. And if the father had been uh, a weaker person, he might not have been the superhero that he is. Right. And also, when you think about it, too, what, what, I, what I really love about it is that here you've got a character who um, is, when you say his father, you mean uh, Kent. You don't mean Jor-El. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's uh, because the one he learns from is, 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 is an Earth man. And, and from an Earth woman as well. And it's, it's, it's uh, so he's, he's I mean, that, he's, a, he's a very complex character underneath that simple surface. What's wonderful is when you have a character who comes from such complex origins. But the result is simple. Meaning that from all of these, all of these forces that have affected him, and, and all these terrible things that have affected him. What emerges is someone who is good and pure and simple in, in, um, in his intent. All right, you gotta tell us, who's the first of the Superman villains we're gonna meet before this story ends? Toy Man. Come on, give us a tease, come on, give us a hand. Mr. McSteez Piddlick. <laughs> Can you give me a serious answer? Come on. You really want to? I, no, if he doesn't give two, you a straight there answer, there are two Superman villains that stand above all the rest. You got to understand, Batman got all the good villains. You know, except two. Um, but but the but you know, Batman got. I, I, let's put it plainly, Batman got the Joker. Nobody's scarier than him, but Superman's terrestrial enemy is Lex Luthor, the guy who's got nothing on Superman at all except that he's smarter than Superman. And and uh, but but the but the deadliest most the deadliest enemy he's got in the entire universe is the monster that. Committed genocide. The, the 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 one who destroyed his planet, the one that destroys planets and actually kidnaps entire cities and puts them in in jars. So the the big one's Brainiac. That's gonna be cool. Just gave it away. You didn't hear that. <laughs> You didn't hear it. You didn't hear it. By the way. But you're going to have to wait a few years for that. <laughs> Isn't it nice to finally put to bed all that nonsense that Frank Miller didn't like Superman? Isn't it nice to definitively put this out there and, and say, see, I've always said it for years. I didn't not like Superman. Batman didn't like Superman. <laughs> Batman kicked Superman's butt. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll do it again whenever he gets the chance. No specifics here, but you drew 190 pages for this three issue? 190 pages. Okay. Is there one massive classic Romita Jr. double splash uh, page that we're going to, you know, look the at? One go, that oh I, my God. The one that I like the best is the three characters in the third issue. Since he gave away the That's ending, I can one. say That's this. That's a great one, yeah. The uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. And they're just about to beat the crap out of each other. And she yeah. comes, steps in and, and stops it. And I think that moment, those three, because I've always wanted to do all three, and I got a chance to draw Wonder Woman finally. That's the first time you got to draw the, the Well, with the three of them together. Wow. That's incredible. Another first. And it made me want to do the character again. Because what she does to the... Well, I can't, I'm not going to give her too much. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. She's, Make them buy she, the book. Make them buy the book. <laughs> but... I do want to... It's okay. We See, we can say whatever we want because we are lying. Everybody yeah, dies yeah, in the end. That's all the... lying. Yes. Uh, are we going to fix this drawing? What are we going to do? Yeah, uh, fix we, that we, so I can talk. Bed? I don't know who's better. You better or Inca than you are a talker or what? <laughs> There's no fixing it. <laughs> well, he's looking at them and mulling what he wants to do. No, I, I know what I want to do. I want to get away from that <laughs> thing. <laughs> You're running out of time. You're going to have to fix that, John. I can finish it. I'll fix it with ink. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, he'll the, fix it in the inks. <laughs> That's the, you know, you know that line goes back to before his father, 
And we'll fix it in the inks. Frank, by now, is there like a certain shorthand that you have with John? I know in all seriousness, like when you guys are talking through the book, mm -hmm. like, are, are you guys in that kind of rhythm that you can say something and he's like, I got it, I got it. Or do you guys have to work through the story and long phone conversations or? No, you know, no, it's, it's, it's better than that. It's that, that I'll, <clears throat> I'll come up with a bunch of ideas and talk them over with, with John um, or I'll, I'll write down some stuff. And then what comes back is so much better than what I had in mind that, that I'll just be rewriting stuff like crazy. It's always I'm been waiting for the other ball busting to happen. There's something more coming. This is too nice. You're not. I, well, it all sucks, but that's the, the <laughs> basic dynamic. What he did, which is the most fun for an artist, is he gives room to play. We discuss it in advance, he gives room to play, and then he goes in and makes it better with, with the dialogue. It was such a comfortable working relationship that that's why I want to work with him again. He lets, again, we learned how to tell stories early on because we were given plots only. So we know this, and it works to our advantage. It's so much fun because you get input from the artist, and then he hones it with dialogue. It was it's, it's, great. It's, it really is the method that was developed by, by Stanley and Jack Kirby. Yes. Um, and Stanley and Steve Ditko, but particularly Stanley and Jack Kirby, where where the <coughs> the um, artist was was the was was the primary storyteller uh, in terms of, of 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 figuring out the pacing and 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 the positioning um, and and including many of the story elements um, and the. And so, so that the, the writer would bounce on either side of the process. First, first at the plot level, and then coming in to pull the whole thing together and add the musical notes of the words. Um, with this is something that this is now. This is a Stan and Jack made it look easy, um, and it is easy in the right hands, in that it's pleasurable and it brings the best out of everybody. But you've got to know what you're doing, and you've got to be able to trust each other. What the hell is happening? Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Miller, John Romita Jr. Thanks a lot. And looks like John is just about done. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, and look, a special surprise guest, Danny Mickey. Yeah, hey, why up here? Come on up here. Come on up here. Why didn't we have him ink this? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Frank. Oh, dude. Honor to be here. Finally. Don't look at this, Danny. I bet you can't pencil as well hey, guys, as Guys, in a few minutes, they're, they're going to be on the other side uh, signing for the wristband signing. So if you have the wristbands, you'll be over there. <laughs> we have a gift for this young man in the, in the green outfit. The guy with the, the beard older than he is. You know what? Let me get Frank's name on that. Put your handcock on that, boss. Frank, initial let for our buddy here. Beautiful, beautiful. Remember, it doesn't go on the bottom of bird cages. It's got to go. <laughs> <laughs>